If you're anything like me, your budget when it comes to filmmaking or creating content or whatever you wanna call it is either non-existent or really, really small. Budget, if you will. That's why today I wanna to talk to you about what I think is the best pound for pound, bang for your buck, off camera external monitor. And spoiler alert, it isn't the Atomos Ninja 5. Let's get into it. So the monitor I'm reviewing today is the Desview R6 UHB right here. Uh, let's talk specs because that's all we really care about here. The Desview R6 feature is a pretty standard 5.5 inch touchscreen, full size HDMI in and out ports. Uh, it supports LPE6 batteries as well as NPF batteries and also has a DC option if you buy uh, cabling separately. The touchscreen itself is super, super responsive uh, with little to no input lag. It's got tons of options for displaying waveforms and vector scopes, uh, as well as your audio waveforms. My favorite feature has got to be the displaying false color, which is super, super useful for dialing your exposure in correctly. Uh, and it's super lightweight. It comes in at around 240 grams, which is the weight of a DJI Mavic Mini. Editing Matt here, I realize I forgot to talk about one of my favorite aspects of this monitor and it's the fact that you can upload custom LUTs and display them on your footage while you're recording. That way you have an idea of what your footage already might look like after the editing process is over. This is not something that I meant to miss out on because it's one of my favorite pieces, but keep that in mind when you're considering the R6, custom LUTs on your log footage right on the monitor. And here's the kicker for me, the R6 has 2,800 nits of brightness. And that is crazy because you compare it to something like the Atomos Ninja 5, and the Ninja 5 only has 1,000 nits, which is mind blowing that this almost has triple the brightness of the Ninja 5. Having 2,800 nits means that you can film in full sun without needing some stupid looking sun hood, and you can actually just crank that brightness all the way up, and you never have to worry about not being able to see your monitor. Now, I know that I compared this to the Ninja 5, and I know that Atomos fanboys are gonna go crazy and hate that I said that, but I am just basing this review off of my personal experience, and I've never owned a Ninja 5, so you know what, if Atomos wants to send me one, sure, I'll do a review. But right now we're basing all of everything that I'm saying off of my own experience with the R6. I will add in the middle of this a disclaimer that I know the comparison between the Ninja 5 and the R6 is a little bit weird because the Ninja 5 has capabilities like external recording that the R6 simply does not. But for the difference in price, a whopping $400, I will you know, put up with SD cards and buy a bunch more for the same price and just swap SD cards instead of buying an external recorder and SSDs for that monitor. I've been using this external monitor for, you know, going on about a year and a half to two years in a variety of contexts, and I have almost nothing bad to say about this monitor. Uh, but that being said, I do have um, just two drawbacks or cons, if you will, uh, about this monitor in particular. Uh, first, one of the drawbacks that might actually not even be something that's available on camera monitors, I haven't used enough to know, but you never have a battery level display like you would on a normal camera that tells you how much percentage of your battery is left. Uh, if you're like me, you're not gonna be using necessarily something like a D-tap off of a V-mount battery, but you're actually just using the abundance of NPF batteries that you have. And it's tough because you'll most likely be facing a situation like me where your camera monitor dies in the middle of a shoot because you didn't know how much battery was left and you've simply just run out of NPF batteries. Uh, second, having no option for external recording is a little bit of a bummer. I know I listed that as a reason why you should get the R6 if you're looking for a budget alternative, 
But at the same time, if you're using an older filmmaking camera like I am, I'm filming this on the A7S II and that's been our workhorse for the last year, uh, you know that it just drains batteries like crazy and having an option for externally recording uh, would be a game changer just for the fact of saving a little bit of battery life here and there. So take that as you will. I mean, other than those two things, I really only have good things to say about this monitor. I don't, that's it. So in conclusion, next time you're in the market for an external monitor, but you're feeling like something in the Atomos line is just a little bit out of your current reach or a little bit out of your current budget, I would suggest you consider the Deskview R6. I really do believe that if you wanna take your filmmaking to the next level, an external camera monitor is going to take you there. Uh, and if you wanna get started with something a little bit on the cheaper side without sacrificing quality, consider the R6. That's all I've got. Hit the like button if this helped you out or if you're considering picking up the R6, drop a comment and tell me about your experience with the R6 if you've used one personally. My name is Matt and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.